I keep seeing a man on my street. I live on a street with lots of kids and old couples, so seeing people walk around at all times of day is fairly common. I remember the first time I saw him it was around mid-August. He was wearing a suit that wasn't too formal, but wasn't run down either. He looked like a salesman, and he was holding a briefcase. Arthur Miller just ejaculated on my street, thanks, it's 2017. It was around 11 p.m., and I went to get something from my mom's car with my brother, and as I looked up, I saw him. He wasn't on the sidewalk, he was straight up walking in the middle of the street. We made brief eye contact, but something about it was just super off. He seemed to come out of nowhere, and it was hot as fuck as well, so I don't understand why he was wearing a suit, let alone walking with a briefcase as well. I asked my brother if he saw him too, and he told me he found it equally weird. The second time I saw him was in October. It was afternoon on the 29th, and I was getting some plants and branches for a personal project in the woods at the end of the street. And when I got out of the woods, he was he was just sitting on the curb of the sidewalk. He didn't have his phone out or anything. He was just sitting there with the same briefcase. He didn't have his blazer on, though. I wanted to ask him if it was alright, but I felt like I shouldn't. I just switched street sides and went home. The third time I, I saw him was about a week ago. The snow was hitting hard and my ass was grass every single morning since I walked to school. Like it's not too far, but I'd rather die than walk home in a snowstorm. I saw him on a bench in front of the Virgin Mary statue on the Abbey grounds. I sometimes go there to take pictures. He wasn't wearing a coat, just the same suit, and his briefcase was next to him. I don't think he saw me that time. I won't put a disclaimer that I don't believe in paranormal things or whatnot, because I do and I always have. I have an overactive imagination, and it could just be that getting the best of me. I hope it is. But something has always been off about this town. Any thoughts? Should I talk to him, or if I ever see him again, what should I do? My first experience with a demon. As requested in another thread a few days ago, I will share the story of my encounter with a demon a few years ago. I apologize for the delay, everyone. I just had a relative move in with dementia and have been taking care of her this whole time. Let me preface this story with a disclaimer. I welcome all feedback, even criticism or disbelief, but these events truly did happen to me. Back in 2014, I decided to move in with a couple of my friends from high school. We had recently graduated and were looking to split rent costs between four people in a three-bedroom apartment. I was sharing the master bedroom with a close friend from high school, whom we'll just call Ben for the sake of being anonymous. We moved into the apartment in June, and for the first few weeks things were going fine. However, at one point around August, things began to take a sudden turn for the worse. My friend came home one day from work and was home alone. I was the second to arrive home that day, and found Ben sitting outside the apartment under the stairwell visibly upset. I asked them what was going on, and they told me the following story. They arrived home from work and took a shower, but the entire time they were in there, she heard several loud noises in the apartment. He had assumed that someone had came home, but when he came into the living room, he saw something terrifying. According to Ben, there appeared to be a shadowy figure of a small child standing in the corner of the dining room. He ran out the back door and waited outside until one of us got home that same night. I woke up in the middle of the night and had a horrible sleep paralysis episode. I saw a boy at the foot of my bed glaring at me with a horrible look in his eyes. My first thought was that it was just my imagination creating this image due to my friend's experiences and telling me about it. As time went on, however, I was proven to be very, very wrong. My friend was slowly spiraling out of control, missing his shifts, sleeping all day, etc. Eventually, he started lashing out at everyone and crying himself to sleep at night. These behaviors were very unusual for him, so he consulted a medium to see if the root cause of his behavior was something paranormal. According to them, Ben was being haunted by a demonic attachment that he had for years. They called the entity an Espa, or a lower level demon, which fed on the spiritual energies of the victims until they move on, on to their next victim. Another one of our roommates will call him Ryan, was having a hard time sleeping and hearing knocking in the closet at nighttime. The medium told me in private, as not to scare Ryan, that the Espa planned to attach to him next. I came home from an early shift the next day and nobody was home. After working up the courage to walk inside, I finally went in and checked the rooms to make sure I was alone. I discovered that Ryan's room was an absolute mess and this was very unusual for him because it was always clean. 
After this physical evidence, something might be going on. We invited the medium over to help us with a banishment ritual. The following night, we invited Ben into the living room and conducted the ritual. I won't go into details. The, the medium did most of the stuff, but we eventually saw a bright white light flash in the room. At this point, is where my entire perspective on the paranormal completely changed. We saw a large shadow hover over Ben, pause in the air, and then fly outside the patio door. The energy inside our apartment immediately felt so much lighter, and my friend appeared to feel much better. Unfortunately, the demonic entity was not banished completely. About a week later, everyone in the house complained of intense nightmares and trouble sleeping. For the most part, they involved a family member that lost a little boy somehow. I have no idea how this is connected to the Espa that was attached to Ben, and would love to hear your input. About two weeks after the ritual is when the worst paranormal experience of my life occurred. I woke up in the middle of the night with the most intense feeling of dread that I've ever felt before. I realized that I was not experiencing sleep paralysis and was therefore alarmed. I felt drawn to look at the window and that was right above Ben's bed on the other side of the room. Outside of the window, clear as day, I saw a demonic entity looking right at me. It had a beak-like face with red eyes large bony talons for fingers and genuinely made me feel sick with dread. I ran into my other roommate Katie's room and slept on the floor after that night. I decided that I cannot take being in this dark environment. I moved back in with my family and have not seen the demon since. Any input on what that thing was, how it connects with the family we saw in our nightmares, and why Ben got this attachment in the first place, it would be all appreciated. I do not know for sure if it was an Espa, as is just, just what the medium told us. The demonic entity that I saw outside the window that night still scares me to this day. Again, I, I expect people to be skeptical of the paranormal, but welcome any thoughts you have on this experience. Thank you for reading my story. C11 Everywhere in August of 2001, I kept seeing 11, or I would doodle at work 11. I would keep seeing 11 everywhere I was, driving me nuts. I kept dreaming about plane crashes and I could feel the heat and smell smoke and strange smell. I discovered what the smell of burning flesh. The week of September leading up to 9-11, I was getting sick and then I decided to go to the hospital. I was just so sick I thought at first I had the stomach flu, as I could not keep anything down. While sleeping in the hospital, I woke up screaming, and then I asked the nurse, was something terrible happening? And the nurse told me, yes, two airplanes crashed in the Twin Towers in New York City. In one of my dreams, I was in one of the planes, and I could see the skyline. Since I've never been to New York, I didn't recognize anything. I had this dream or one similar one from August 2001 up to September 10th, 2001. The illness was getting progressively worse, and that night of September 10th, called a taxi and went to St. Paul's Hospital, a hospital in Vancouver. I thought I was going to die. I was admitted, tests were done, I was put on an IV. I woke up with a sick taste in my mouth like I had smoke in my mouth. I was very, very sick that night, but in the morning I was better, almost like I wasn't sick at all. I thought at first I was still dreaming, but I saw the same images in my dream so many times, but I didn't realize what I was dreaming was real and it was a warning. I still don't write down my dreams, but now I tend to feel, feel things. The 2004 tsunami as I felt it, and again, was sicker than a dog a few, few days before that. I'm currently being woken up from a nightmare of another disaster. I'm not sure when, but it's close. It's now October 12, 2009, so at least this one is documented. Trapped. This story happened back in August 2013 at my home. That year had started very badly as I lost my grandfather and my dad changed his job and my mom had to help him too. I was going with them but I could not support the pressure nor the atmosphere and told my parents it would be better if I could stay home alone on Saturday nights than come with them to work in our fast food restaurant at that time and they accepted. Well, as a 13 year old kid at the time, I knew it would be cool. I would play my PS2 games and watch movies, but this event was the first I experienced in my life. On the end of August 2013, a Saturday night after 7pm, alone, 
I heated my food and then came back to my bedroom and watched a Bollywood gossip about a new movie which would release called Sun Does a Romance. While I was eating and watching at the same time, I heard the doorbell ring loudly and continuously. I was stunned, but I first peeped at the window to see who it was downstairs, but I saw no one. Even though it was dark, I could see due to the lampposts, which reflected partly my room. I peeped twice or thrice with no avail. There was no one. The bell would not stop ringing and I started to freak out. I seized my phone and called my mother, terrified, who told me to stay calm and suddenly all stopped. I was relieved and I went to the kitchen to fetch a glass of water. I was still shocked but now, as I think, I am sure that it could have been something paranormal and a first to a mystery which will resurface back in 2016. The main gate will make a lot of noise even when you open it partly and I still remember after the bell stopped ringing, even after 10 minutes I heard nothing. The gate was still closed and I live in a peaceful region. No one would disturb anyone and no one could know I was home. I do not know what that spirit wanted, but that did not disturb me as much, and I reprised my normal life until in 2015-2016. I thought that my life would continue normally with my routine, but it did not. As of 2015, I became depressive, and my condition did not change the following year as well. I began to stay in the dark, and this is still the place where I can resource myself and take a breather. That major incident happened on the 15th of August 2016. From the first incident which happened in August 2013, there are similarities which match with the second incident too. It happened in the same month. My dad's birthday is in August which matches the month. That second event attacked him, another male. The beginning of the second incident happened on a Muslim holiday. I was with my father in the car after leaving my dad's daughter at her house and we had to leave her child's milk and other baby stuff at my dad's house where most of his sisters and brothers used to live and they came in to pack that stuff at night. Surprisingly, my dad asked me to hide myself in the car and not make any noise, as he did not want others to know that I was there. I told him why, but he did not want to answer. I did it. He gave the stuff to the other members of the family, and then saw his brother-in-law and wanted to talk to him. He stopped the car further and left me in the car. Later on, he told me not to tell my mother I was deeply hurt. Am I not his son? Why was he hiding me? All sorts of thoughts came to my mind, but day by day, and the day before that incident happened, my dad was not at home. Only me and my mother were. I remember that all was normal. There were stuffs on the main staircase upwards, which my mom used to keep things in it. Mostly boxes, and since I was small, all remained where it was and never fell. There was not too much either. I made a tour, which I usually do there, and all was normal, and went to my bedroom. Just then, I heard a huge crash and yelled to my mother, who was in her room. We thought that somebody had entered, and even the neighbor came out to see. When we reached at the staircase, most of the things had fallen, but what shocked me the most is the items which were on the upper left hand side fell too, although the middle did not. It was as if something came and with an anger made everything fall. We then placed it as it was and left. The next morning, my parents left me at school and I felt like something bad will happen. And I remember that, as if something told me to write something, a word in Hindi, Raz, which I partly colored in red which means secret. That morning before classes start, during the same day at 1pm, my mother came to fetch me at school and told me that my dad had a heart stroke and that he was in the hospital. He survived though. After mostly a year passed, it was my turn to experience other haunted experiences. It happened in August. It was a Friday and I was in Rose Hill to buy things. I was walking down an alley which had shops. It was daytime and everything seemed good until I heard a grumpy, angry voice yelling my name loudly right behind my back and I turned and stared at there was no one. Everything seemed normal and I continued on my way. The Sunday which followed, I went to my grandmother's place and I told her my experience. And she told me that yesterday night, a man shouted at her door loudly through the curtains. She could see a silhouette of a man. But when she peeped or looked at the window or at the door, there was... There was no one. We were bewildered, but this was not over for us yet. I just came home with my dad. It was night. I was the last one to close the main door of the house, and I'd switched off the lights of the staircase, and of the living room, and was just about to leave the living room and go to my bedroom, and the lights of the living room switched on by itself. I'm not joking. I swear that I switched it off, and I was shocked. I switched it off again and ran to my bedroom. I took my tablet, and my best friend was online, and I phoned her. While we were talking, I saw with my own eyes, the door closing by itself loudly. I did not hesitate and opened it. Afterwards... Nothing else happened.
Mimicking being. Me, age eight, moving into a new house. My family consists of myself, my mother, and my sister. It is a nice two-story house with four bedrooms, two living rooms, and a bathroom under the stairs. I was exploring the house while everyone else was moving stuff in. I walk into the second biggest bedroom, which is a bit cooler than all the others. I decide to explore the big walk-in closet. There's a large circle spray painted onto the wall. I stand there to try to understand what it really was, only to figure out it's a demon's head. The shitty art piece gets painted over soon after that. Over the years, I witness shadow people. Two children, one boy and one girl, and one tall man with a bowler hat. The two children often roam around the house doing normal things like playing. The bowler hat man stayed a distance. Children often ran past my doorway at night. I once saw them staring at me from the foot of my bed. Flip about a year or so, I'm about nine now. I'm putting away clothes in my dresser. The dresser holds my TV. A soft pressure is put on my back, and the TV clicks on. I turn it off and continue sorting. This event continues a few more times. I don't see the children again after this, nor the bowler hat man. One thing commonly occurs when relatives stay at the house. Our grand piano plays itself late at night. With everyone upstairs, the keys never move. Flip to Christmas Eve 2012, I am 10 years old now. My family and I are on the couch in the living room that connects to the garage. We are watching some cheesy Lifetime movie. The door that connects to the garage has a heavy plastic flap, most likely for cats. The flap begins to swing wildly, opening and closing like it's being shoved. My mother opens the door, confirms the big metal garage door is closed, and the garage itself is undisturbed. She closes the door and steps away. The flap continues. We do not stay in the house that night. We move a few years later for other reasons. New house in 2014. Two plus years go by with no activity. It has recently spiked. It started with my dog getting wary of certain spaces and doorways at night, and my Snapchat picking up faces where they shouldn't be, and me getting touched on my arm of my hair being brushed occasionally. I don't read into it and brush it off deciding it wasn't worth mentioning to my family members. It escalates and becomes a family-wide phenomenon. My mother's boyfriend knocking on my door around 11.30 last night, asking if I heard footsteps upstairs. I tell him no, but I heard knocking on my ceiling the previous night. He tells me to hush and point to the vents in my hallway. Listen. We hear soft creaks and rummaging upstairs. We go to check it out. There's nothing. We go back to our rooms, not caring. An hour later, my sister texts me saying she hears scratching on the walls and someone in the living room. She gathers her stuff and sleeps in my room. Nothing significant happens the rest of the night. This morning, we... My sister, my mom's boyfriend, and myself all discuss the happenings of last night. My mother's boyfriend, who has a son, stays with us occasionally. He points out how whatever there's mimics how he behaves when he's there. Going into the bathroom, getting into bed, etc. My mother has alerted me to seeing a shadow that resembles me walking past her occasionally. I heard someone call for me today. However, it was just my sister in the house and did not sound like her in the slightest, though. I never heard of a spirit mimicking people. I wonder why it's doing that. August 25th, nothing new happened last night and upon a suggestion this morning, I dust the salt around my doorway and near the windows. My room feels a bit more comfortable and I don't hear thumps above it. However, I was in the living room in the house by myself, waiting for my door to finish up outside. And suddenly, the house smells sweet like a syrup of sorts. I haven't cooked today and my mom hasn't made any sort of sweets in a while and I haven't applied any more perfume today. I felt a little drowsy upon smelling it, and I felt a little uneasy, to be honest. I wonder if something is stirring. Creepy Painting Okay, I'm fairly new to Reddit, but I've personally tried 50-50 and watched YouTube videos about ghosts and paranormal things. My mom has believed that ghosts and otherworldly beings exist, and we are a fairly religious family going way back. Back around 10 years ago, I'm 15, when I was 5, I was out with my friends in mom's friend's house. My mom was there. I was out playing with them, but my mom and her friend were sitting on a step watching us. And this woman, she had red hair from what I was told, walked into the garden and walked up to them, mom and friend. My mom's friend said, Hi, can I help you? And the woman said, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to your friend. 
She talked to my mom and was able to guess her mom's real name and tell her what her life will be like in the future. And then she said, wait right here, I'll be back. The woman walked off and came back a few minutes later with two paintings, but had the back of both facing my mom, so mom couldn't see what was on them. My mom had army green cargo pants and 15 euro in her right pocket on her thigh, but more money plotted on other places. It had around 10 euros in total and others in smoke. And the woman said, pick one, right or left. And my mom chose right. It's a picture of the Holy Mary, hold our Lord, but it has a clock in the corner. And the woman said, time will tell your faith. Now is payment. Give me whatever is in your pocket on your right thigh. And my mom lied and said, I have nothing in there but a few sheets. And the woman said, I know you're lying. You have 15 euros in that pocket. Give it to me. So she did, and the woman walked away without a word. And my mom has a smaller picture of this painting without a clock, and I've searched the pictures of it and haven't found it. Years later, when I was 7 or 8 years old, I put it in a black plastic bag and I threw it out. Note, we had it in our attic for two-ish years, and we never saw it again until four days ago. We went into the attic and it was there in the corner untouched, like it was the year my mom got it. It had the thinnest layer of dust, like... It has been there for a month, because it was there since she was given it. It wouldn't be recognizable, because it was a lot of dust and grime. The years after we threw away the painting, we threw it away because it was creepy and we didn't want to hang it anywhere. But after it was gone, we started seeing ghosty figures walk around our apartment, and doors closed by themselves, which we just passed off as, oh, it's just her eyes, or it's, 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 it's a draft. But around sometime next month, my uncle died. We'd always seen a manly figure about six foot walk around our apartment, and we knew it was him, with us. But at the time, we'd experience things happen, and there was always a feeling of someone watching us, and our chest would feel heavy. But since we found the painting, and it's in the main area of our home, a heavy feeling has lifted, and we haven't heard or seen anything since before. If anyone is curious of what the painting looks like, or the little picture looks like, I'll post pictures. This house feels like a tomb. To give a little background on the house where I lived up until last April, right after graduating high school in 2005, I moved out of my mother's house and into my father's house. They have been divorced since I was 10 years old, which is also the house where my grandparents lived on my father's side. It was built by my grandfather and his dad, my great-grandfather, along with two bedroom upstairs, a living room, kitchen, and one bathroom. There was also a good-sized den downstairs and another bathroom, as well as a room with a pool table, our boiler and storage room, and all of that. It also had my grandmother's sewing room. Attached to a lower level was a huge three-car garage that served my grandfather's machine shop. He taught my dad the trade, so when he passed away after, my grandmother, the logical choice was to have my father buy out my aunt and uncle so he could own the house and the attached business which he had been running now by himself since the early 2000s. Anyways, after both my parents passed, my dad remarried to a woman who had three kids. Shortly after they moved in, my stepmother started claiming that weird things were happening in the house when my father was downstairs working and she was upstairs alone. During the day when all the kids were at school, she said she would be in the kitchen and hear the bedroom doors creak open and close, firmly all by themselves. Though she never got a chance to see it visually with her own eyes. She also said that she always felt like there was a presence nearby, even though when there was no one actually there. It was unsettling to her, but my father didn't have any experiences of his own to go off on. So he thought maybe she was just weirded out by the fact that both my grandparents died in that house, right in the bedroom where her and my father slept every single night. Her kids thought there was something off in the feeling of the house too but it's easy to assume that kids with imaginations, especially very active ones and impressionable minds, will feed off their mother's paranoia. So everyone just tried to ignore it and go about their daily lives without thinking too much of it. When I moved back into that house, the same house where I'd gone every day after school to be with my grandparents before my parents got off work, I could feel a significant change in how the house made me feel, being inside of it. It used to feel crisp and refined, and full of light from the windows. When I moved back, it felt like a dark cave. No matter how many lights you turned on, or window shades you opened. Years later, someone said to me about that house that nailed, nailed a coffin on the board. 
and describe what I haven't been able to get really, really pinpoint. It felt like a dark tomb. Even the air seemed extremely still, and somehow almost suffocating. And that maybe it was because of the death of my grandparents that the comforting feeling I used to get when I was there felt so completely lost. Then things got pretty weird and frankly very scary for me to experience, even if the accounts don't sound drop-dead terrifying through text. My dad got divorced in 2006 after just three years of marriage. It was a messy and sad divorce, and my stepmother and her kids moved out, obviously. One of the things they didn't take with them was a big screen TV that was out in the living room. It was an older model, not a flat screen, the tube kind, if that makes sense. Not long after they moved out, and it was just me and my dad, the TV would randomly turn itself on in the middle of the day or the middle of the night without anyone in the room. Several times, the TV remote was laying in plain sight, exactly where I left it the previous day. It would turn on and cycle through channels, not quickly, but maybe for a slow count of 30 seconds to a full minute. They didn't seem to be at any rhythm or reason or how it would happen, because it would turn to seemingly random channels, and not just ascend or descend in order. Channel 21, channel 56, channel 3, stuff like that. I always turn it off and point it out to my dad one of the nights when he was upstairs and around to see it for himself. He thought it was weird, but figured it was a problem with the wiring inside, maybe an issue with the remote control itself. Or possibly, my grandfather had once set a timer on it, and that was the explanation. Thinking it totally reasonable, I figured out how to check the timer, and lo and behold, it wasn't set for anything. So to solve the problem, I unplugged the TV whenever I wasn't going to use it, because frankly, it was kind of creeping me out to have it happen a couple times a week. Around this time was also when I started to sense that feeling that my stepmother had talked about when she said she felt like she was being watched or that it felt like a presence would suddenly come into the room and linger nearby. I would be doing something totally normal, even in broad daylight, and be overcome with a powerful sensation that there was something directly behind me, following me, as I went to the kitchen for something to eat or whatever like that. And, it, and it, again, I thought it was just being paranoid and I really, really just wanted to believe that it was all my imagination and a byproduct of living in the house where your grandparents died. So I mostly just ignored it, and that was good enough for me. Now, fast forward to August of 2008, when my boyfriend moved in. My father has always been really cool with me, and actually thought it would be best for me to explore my new serious relationship on my terms in my own house, where I would have more control than, say, getting an apartment with my boyfriend right away. He was always wanting to look out for me, and I always given me plenty of space to make my own choices, so it worked out really well in that regard, since he was gone all the time anyways. Between working downstairs in the shop and going out to play gigs with his band, the house was basically at my disposal as my own. It was really comforting to have another person in the house more often than my father was. But before long, my boyfriend started to experience that creeping, powerful sensation of being watched and followed around the house. I didn't even mention to him anything about my experiences there, or my stepmother's experiences, but he quickly started saying things like, man, I don't know why, but your house is creepy as hell. I don't even like walking down the hallway to the bathroom in the dark. He's the only one who likened it to a dark crypt, no matter what attempts you made to let in light or let the air flowing. At this point, he knew nothing about my grandparents having died there. It's not the type of thing you tell someone when they first move into your house, you know? It seemed like after he moved in, things started to intensify a little bit more. My mother's father died the year my boyfriend moved in, and my mother gave me his old television, which was much better than the one I had in my bedroom at the time. We were excited to hook up the N64 to play, and rather than use it for actual watching TV, well, before long, that set started to turn itself on and off and switch through the channels exactly like the other TV had. Different make and model, different remotes. It was unnerving, but I reasoned maybe somehow there were signals being crossed by a neighbor across the street and it was just a quirky thing to deal with. Then our really messed up dreams started happening. My boyfriend Bert began screaming and pleading in his sleep while he was dreaming almost every single night, saying no, 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 and Leno would sound like terrified pain groans loud enough to startle me awake. Apparently, this is not something he has knowledge of ever doing anywhere else. And since we moved, that's not the first time we left. One of the most notable experiences he had 
was waking up in our bed, and he said he was being pulled out of the bed by something. His upper body and head was hanging off the side of the bed, but not hanging. It was rigid, like someone was holding him level with a mattress and not letting him flop down as a limp body would do. Completely freaked out, he tried to move his arms and realized that the sheets were wrapped tightly around his chest and arms, forcing his arms into a cross position over his chest like a mummy. He tried to yell out to me and ask for help, but he found that for some reason he couldn't speak. Freaking out, he managed to lift his leg closest to me and hook it around my legs. As soon as he did that, he said that the sensation of being dragged out of bed immediately evaporated, and he was able to pull himself back into bed and unwrap the sheets from around him. He was pretty weirded out by it, because nothing like it has ever happened to him before, and combined with the odd presence feeling, the TV's oddities and the nightly screaming, it was understandably disturbing. It kind of reminded me of a dream that I experienced right before he had moved in, where I had a dream that I was sitting at a long dinner table in a room with lots of windows. A ton of people were there, though I don't think I knew any of them personally. Suddenly, a bunch of multicolored orbs come filtering into the room through the windows, filling the space all around us, and bringing with them an overwhelming sense of such deep peace and wholeness that I never felt before before or since then. In the dream, the orbs took with me, and I became pure energy, flying like a blood cell through a vein, one tiny orb of light among a million more that were pure goodness and light. It was sort of like how they show the TARDIS on Doctor Who traveling through space and time. Anyways, the, the dream itself took a dramatic turn. I ended up in my bedroom and it was completely pitch black. Just enough natural light from the outside world to make the outline of my bedroom door visible. I was sitting in a wooden chair from the kitchen, facing the wall, I mean next to my bedroom door, which was cracked open ominously. There were no lights on anywhere else in the house. I could tell by how completely impenetrable the blackness was. I looked down and I suddenly realized that I was naked in the chair, with my underwear down around my ankles and the bottoms of my feet pressed against the wall, with my knees bent towards my chest, and the ways dream have a way of doing, my brain filled with the blanks that I was like that, because I had just been raped and placed there purposefully. I figured out why when I looked through the crack in the bedroom door, and didn't see anything in that total darkness, but I could feel that overwhelming presence that had been bothering us, except it was magnified to a thousand. I don't believe in demons. But this was what my brain was telling me there was something completely evil, corrupted, and dumbfoundedly terrifying in that darkness, staring back at me despite not seeing any eyes, watching me with perverse glee, as if it was responsible, replacing me in the chair and it was happy to see me cry. That's when I woke up and when I came to, I was standing in the hallway right outside of the bathroom door facing it, having been crying in my sleep, because my face was wet with tears. Something that has never happened to me that I can ever recall. The house was dark, like in my dream. So I literally ran back to my room in a state of sheer panic, turned on all the lights and didn't care to sleep until morning came and established itself as a full noon sun high in the sky. I tried to place it out of my mind, thinking it was just an awful nightmare that I would have to get over eventually, no matter how physically ill it made me feel just to think it all over my mind. It was like I couldn't get out of my head. The feeling of being violated, and the feeling of that tangible, evil darkness staring back at me through the crack in my bedroom door. So after my boyfriend's weird experience getting yanked from the bed, things started getting very intense as far as bad feelings went. It got to the point where I felt like there was an actual unseen predator living in the space of the house with us, and I could barely muster the courage to take a shower by myself, incredibly certain that something was always just about to draw back the shower curtain and expose its face to me. It got so bad and oppressive that neither one of us could go into the kitchen or the basement at night without someone else's presence. Just to walk from one end of the house to the other, we would have to turn on every light along the way to feel slightly less freaked out. The worst part was never seeing anything visual, but that haunting, awful feeling of someone nearby, just around the corner, ready to come out and scare the ever-loving shit out of you. We both started just sink into a hard depression. It was difficult to care about anything, even though we were successful and happy with lots of things to be thankful for. My dad actually wanted us to stay there to keep an eye on things, while we spent most every night at his girlfriend's house. 
because the house is on a major highway, and we've had a few break-ins in his machine shop, and even some arson happened right next door. I was torn between staying and wanting to get the fuck out of there ASAP so I could resume a normal life where I didn't feel like I was being hunted whenever I left my bedroom. A few other things happened. More minor things. One time a huge canister that had to have weighed over 200 pounds came off the wall in the shop where I'd been resting for literally years, untouched, and crashed to the ground in front of one of my dad's employees, which was really puzzled by it. Another time, when we were in the kitchen at night, we heard an unexplainable hiss come out of the hallway right where I had awoken from a nightmare that seemed to start off loud and then travel down the hallway quickly, becoming more quiet as it went. We don't have radiators. There was no TV or radio on or anything like that, and we both instantly looked at each other in total instinctive fear. And no, it wasn't a cat. Another time, a door leading up to the attic, something, something never opened. It always kept shut because it allows the heat in the house to escape rapidly. It was wide open when I walked into the kitchen after being out of it for only a couple minutes. What my boyfriend pointed out, which was even weirder, is that there is some sort of vent directly above where I'd woken up in the hallway from my nightmare that leads into the attic above. I know none of this is super scary to most people, but this feeling of a dark presence had haunted me for years living there. It made me feel like I was losing my mind, and it crippled my ability to even feel slightly relaxed at my own home, within my own dwellings. Right before we moved out, my boyfriend had another nightmare. He was standing at the top of the stairs leading into the basement and lower half of the house, and a shadowy figure rushed up directly at him. He slammed the door shut, and every time he opened it, there was a brick wall, with only a thin line of space between the slanted ceiling of the staircase and the top of the wall. For some reason, in his dream, he said he loved the most badass, rageful Hulk scream ever, as if to confront the demon with his anger. In response, a presence threw a dead, burnt human body over the wall, through the crack, and at my boyfriend's feet. Then he woke up. All I can say is that I am relieved to no longer live there, and to live 16 hours away instead in a different state. Whether these things can be logically explained or not, I feel like... I've been able to rapidly awaken from beneath that oppressive, scary atmosphere, and I'm no longer afraid to walk down the hallway at night to go to the bathroom, or stand in the kitchen and make a sandwich with no one else around. Those simple activities were just two of the very basic, mundane things most people do without ever thinking twice, but for us, it was always a battle of willpower. I can still remember the sound of my own blood rushing in my ears. Whenever I was certain something was coiling its dark, dangerous claws around me from behind. Mimicking Entity in a Castle I Stayed At In August of 2016, I spent the night in a castle in Upper Middle Hein area of Rhineland Pfalz, south of Koblenz, Germany. It was built sometime in the 1100s, although fortifications on the site date back to the 900s, and after its destruction by the French in the late 17th century, it was outfitted as a hotel. I was there with my parents who were celebrating their anniversary. The castle was very high up on a rocky hill. No wonder it had survived for so long. My parents had their own small cottage, which used to be one of the gatehouses, while my room was in one of the main buildings of the castle, four or five stories up. It took maybe 10, 10 to 15 minutes to walk from the gatehouse to my room, as it required navigating the tight, steep outer passageways and corridors required to fit the whole structure so high up on the hill. The style of doors used throughout the castle was quite old as well. They were all heavy and wooden, and the keys were traditional skeleton keys, no manual locks, so if you wanted to lock your door after you got to your room, you had to stick the key in to do it. The keys were also chained to a small night figurine in order to prevent guests from losing them, so they made a fair bit of noise when you used them. I was having a really hard time getting to bed that night because a swarm of bugs had come into my room. The frame of the window was faulty, and the lights had attracted them in earlier. So, small bugs were covering everything. I left the lights off for hours, 
but that only helped for so, so much. Come about, about 4 a.m., I just brushed my teeth and was in my underwear, about to get into bed. At that point, I heard some faint voices outside my door and listened intently. They were getting a bit louder and sounded like, sounded, sounded just like my parents. I couldn't make out anything they were saying, but they had a happy but quiet tone, like they were trying to be courteous because people were sleeping, but that they were also having a good time. Faint short laughter and quiet remarks in an upbeat tone, that kind of thing. It was unmistakably the voices of my parents. I heard the jingling of a key and the sound of it bumping against my door, as if they were trying to come to talk to me or something. As soon as I had heard their voices, keep in mind, I couldn't make out anything that was said. I rolled my eyes because they were pestering me right when I wanted to go to bed. I even started putting a shirt and shorts on and thought I'd go ahead and open the door for them. But it hit me that they didn't they didn't have a key to my door. Even they only had one key between them to their gatehouse. When I realized this, I took a step back from my door and decided to let them struggle because none of this made any sense to me. Within seconds, it, it went totally quiet. No jingling, no voices, not even footsteps. What I know for sure is that it wasn't my parents and couldn't have been. They never drank. So it's not like they decided to go out and have some fun or something at 4 a.m. in the morning either. We had driven to the castle from Achan earlier, so everyone was exhausted. They wouldn't have visited me that night, even if they wanted to. The one thing I still think about is what would have happened if I'd opened the door to whatever was outside. If it was something paranormal that was outside, it took advantage of my tiredness and almost tricked me into doing it.